Located in the north central Piedmont, about 85 miles south southwest of Washington, D.C., Orange County, Virginia has a land area of about 342 square miles. The county is mostly rural in nature, with most industrial and commercial activity concentrated around the towns of Orange and Gordonsville, and along the Route 3 corridor. The county was formed in 1734, and as we learn from its historian, Frank Walker, it has played a major role in our nation's history. We have physical evidences of so much of the early history of Orange County uh, and of this entire country. Orange County's unique history really starts millions of years ago when geologic forces left a band of the most fertile soil east of the Mississippi running right through it. And although we have evidence that human beings were here as early as 11,000 BC, the documented history of Orange County really starts in 1714, when Alexander Spotswood established Fort Germana with the help of German settlers. Fort Germana was the westernmost settlement of the Virginia colony, right here in Orange County. And it was from Germana then that the push west is reignited. We say, okay, St. Louis is the gateway to the west, that's fine, as long as you understand that Germana is the gateway to St. Louis. We think there are several million people who can claim a descent from those original 42 settlers at Fort Germana. Fort Germana is today considered to be one of the most important as yet undeveloped archaeological sites in the nation, right here in Orange County. The first person to patent land in Orange County was Colonel James P. Taylor II. He would become great-grandfather to two U.S. presidents, James Madison and Zachary Taylor. Named after William Prince of Orange at its formation in 1734, Orange County stretched all the way to the Mississippi River. And the British therefore extended the boundary of Orange County across all of the land that was being claimed by the French. And the gauntlet was at the feet of the French. Uh, they had to respond and they did. The end result was the French and Indian War. Gold and iron were also discovered in eastern Orange County. The iron smelting operation laid thousands of acres to the axe in the mid-18th century. What came back was a man-made jungle, the wilderness, right here in Orange County. The wilderness area was producing large quantities of relatively cheap pig iron, uh, which of then, of course, can be converted into steel and that is the backbone, that is the basis of any industrial uh, revolution, any industrial process at its beginning. Orange County is also the lifelong home of the fourth president of the United States and father of the Constitution, James Madison. A phenomenal constitutional scholar, a man who made a point to educate himself about governments. The end result was his plan for a government and the Virginia plan was adopted by the 1787 Constitutional Convention as the framework around which the new Constitution of the United States of America was built. When it came time to ratify the Constitution, Madison met, right here in Orange County, with a delegation of Baptists who wanted assurance that freedom of religion language would be included in the document. The result, the First Amendment and the Bill of Rights. And he was prepared to do it. He was prepared to see to it that what they were going to call a Bill of Rights would be passed. And finally, the American Civil War raged during all four of its years right here in Orange County. In fact, we experienced a lot more Civil War than, uh, uh, than we would have liked to have, mainly because we wound up on what were the front lines uh, of, the, uh, of the Confederacy. A major Confederate receiving hospital was located in Gordonsville. Federal cavalry clattered down the streets of Orange. Stonewall Jackson marched through on his way to several major battles. And Robert E. Lee and most of his army spent the entire winter of 1863-64 right here in Orange County. And then came the Battle of the Wilderness, a battle so fierce that the woods were set on fire by the musketry. The first day was fought in and around Saunders Field right here in Orange County. It marked the beginning of the end for the Confederacy. Orange County survived the Civil War weak and impoverished. 
During Reconstruction, a Freedmen's Bureau was located in Gordonsville, and a dozen or so small communities of emancipated slaves cropped up throughout the county. In fact, one of Orange County's most famous daughters, Edna Lewis, the Grand Dame of Southern Cooking, was born and raised in one such community named Freetown. An annual food festival honors her contribution. As the county moved towards the 20th century, it naturally settled into a rural, agriculture-based economy, a tradition that survives to this day with the Orange County Fair and the Somerset Steam and Gas Pasture Party. The expansion of railroads through the county spelled prosperity for several small communities, light industry, and small business flourished. The county had its share of disasters, in particular devastating fires that took out whole swaths of both towns in the early 20th century, giving rise to a strong tradition of volunteer fire departments. The county forged through the Depression and into the Second World War, her sons sent overseas some never to return. Andrew Maples was one such hero. Things slowed down after the Second World War, uh, as well they might. Uh, but we have that heritage here, and we're beginning to learn how to explore it and learn from it. Today, Orange County is a thriving community with a diverse population and economy. Still mostly rural, agriculture has expanded into wineries and pick-your-own truck garden farms. Major employers range from a nursing home to a 22-acre greenhouse, from a book publishing facility to an infant formula distributor. Arts and culture abound, and the county's natural beauty attracts thousands of visitors per year. And of course, there's always the rich history, because it happened right here in Orange County.